This music is about a folk hero and prankster named Till Eulenspiegel, and I encourage you to read about it. It'll make your music making more interesting and creative if you know something about this character. Our excerpt begins two bars before figure nine. Simply enough, it has an espressivo piano with a diminuendo. But the trick here is that our opening tempo needs to match our 16th notes at figure nine. So I actually reverse engineer my tempo. I start by thinking, before I begin, by thinking about what my 16th note tempo is in figure nine, which is one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. It's too easy when we see espressivo to slow down. And then what that means is that we have two different tempos in the first three bars of our excerpt. We don't want that. So I encourage you to think about bar nine before you actually begin this excerpt. I do bar nine. I like to do it at the tip on the string. You can do it off the string in the middle if you like, but I like to do it on the string quietly because it gives me the pianissimo, but also crisp. And then as I get louder, I add bow and that gives me my crescendo. Like that. The other challenge of bar nine is we have to count six bars rhythmically. But what we don't want to do is we don't want everyone to hear our counting, which would sound like this. We want to mark those bars and those beats quietly, but we don't want to hear them in the music. So we want to think one, two, three, four, not one, two, like that. Ninth bar of figure nine is Till Eulenspiegel's laughter motif. Um, and I like to play this, even though our score doesn't give us staccato dots, I don't know why it's not consistent. There's staccato dots, Strauss marks staccato dots all the times before, earlier in the piece, especially when the clarinet starts it. I don't know why this excerpt doesn't have the dots, but I've never done it legato. I think it sounds weird and not like laughter. Every time that I've played this and all the recordings I've listened to, this is played slightly off, so I recommend playing it crisp and lifting the bow at the end of each eighth note. That's how I played it at the beginning of this video just to match those clarinet staccato and make it sound like laughter. Figure 10 is tricky because this is when our time signature switches from 6-8 to 3-4. What's important to remember here is that the front row of the woodwind stays in 6-8. What this means is that even though 6-8 is grouped 3 plus 3 and 3-4 three is grouped 2 plus 2 plus 2, what it means is that 6 is the same as 6. That's really important. Our eighth note pulse stays exactly the same. So I recommend putting our metronomes on slowly. And what we want to do is just feel each eighth note steadily. So one bar before figure 10 sounds like this. Four, five, six. One, two. lifting those dotted eighth notes slightly. You don't need to lift them much. What's important is that six eighth notes stays six eighth notes. So I recommend practicing it slowly with a metronome until you start to really feel that tempo shift. And then you can choose to feel it in three four, or you can choose to feel it staying in six eight if you wish, or you can just feel kind of one impulse per bar and six eighth notes. As long as the six eighth note stays the same, 
the way you choose to feel it doesn't really matter. What matters is that your tempo stays exactly the same, even though it's shifting the pulse. At seventh, our bar seven of figure 10, we have each bar two slurs printed per bar. I like to shorten each eighth note slightly so that we're not playing it legato. We're shortening it a little bit just to bring out those phrases. So I'm lifting the last eighth note slightly. You don't have to bring it way out of the string. Just a little bit to mark accent and diminuendo like that so good luck with your 2023 TMEA Allstate excerpts if you have any questions for me feel free to drop them in the comments below